is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the My Gardener channel. I'm so glad you decided to tune in for today's episode because I am pumped about what we're going to be doing. That's right, we're going to be starting seeds today. Not only just are we going to be starting seeds, but we're going to be starting the, the indoor garden for 2018-2019. This is something that I've really been looking forward to and certainly because, uh, not just because it's so much fun, but because we're going to be growing the giant crimson tomato out to full maturity. So I know a lot of you have been anxiously awaiting this episode and, and I appreciate you all being patient with us while we uh, got everything ready. But now that everything is here and all the holidays are out of the way, we're ready to grow. So let's go. Um, let's just jump right in into it too because I thought it'd be fun to give you a full episode on just how we're starting our seeds. Now, uh, we're starting our seeds a little bit differently than, than, well, not necessarily entirely different, but some stuff will be very different from how we normally start seeds. So with when it comes to our lettuces that we're growing hydroponically, we're going to be starting the seeds hydroponically and moving them uh, into their their actual, I guess their, their final home, their growing medium, which will be hydroponic solution, meaning they'll have their full life hydroponic. However, when it comes to our tomato seeds, we're going to be starting them hydroponically and then moving them to a soil growing medium. And you might be asking yourself, why are you doing that? Well, that's because tomato seeds um, are, are very susceptible to things like um, root rot and molds and mildews and things like that. And soil is often, I mean, it's natural to have those things everywhere that soil is because it's a lot of your funguses and molds and mildews are soil born. Even if it's a sterilized growing medium, you still have it kind of finding its home in there. And so I really don't like to start seeds in those solutions if they're extremely rare, extremely finicky, and extremely precious to me, like this giant crimson tomato. Now, if it was any other seed, I wouldn't even worry about it. But because the only seeds we have are inside this bag, I just don't wanna risk it. So we're gonna be starting them here where we can kind of control the growing conditions a lot better and then move them into the soil. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna show you how we do that as we progress. So with that out of the way, I wanna talk about the growing medium we're choosing. The growing medium is called rock wool. And so we get a lot of questions about this. What is rock wool? Well, rock wool, I don't exactly know the exact material, but I believe it is uh, spun fiberglass. Um, so it's kind of like, almost like fiberglass insulation. I could be wrong, but that's like the kind of the texture and the, the, um, the appearance. Um, it just basically, it doesn't really matter what it's made of, but, uh, but what it does is it holds on to moisture very well but it also allows drainage to, it allows it to drain very well. It has good air and so, or has good aeration so the roots can develop very quickly and, uh, and that just really helps to simulate the, the best soil that you could find. Now when it comes to uh, why we have a lemon here, it's also very, uh, very interesting why we have a lemon. So um, I actually discovered that there was a couple of reasons why seeds don't germinate very well. And the main reason why seeds don't germinate very well is because pH. And when it comes to rock wool, the pH is slightly alkaline. And to combat that, or kind of overcome the pH issue, people will use lemons. I had no idea. And so I was always using a chemical called pH down. And it's just a, it's just a water soluble solution that lowers the pH or raises the acidity. And then on the back of the, or I guess the front of the box here, it says, use a lemon. So. I said, you know what? I'm going to use a lemon instead of pH down because I try to grow as organically as possible, um, even when it comes to when even when it comes to things like hydroponics. The other thing we're going to need are some pH strips. This way we can see what our pH is of our solution. That really is a a super handy tool to have on hand. It's like two bucks for these. It's really inexpensive to have, and and you get a hundred strips. So definitely handy to have. Then uh, we're just going to have our our tubs that we're gonna have our uh, our rock wool cubes in to, to start germinating. This one is going to be the soak tub, but it's also gonna be the home for the lettuce. Um, and then we have a separate tub for the tomatoes. And I keep them separate because I don't wanna risk any uh, cross-contamination or anything with these tomato seeds. I really wanna treat them much like a quarantined situation and just keep them as, uh, as quarantined and as sterile as possible so that we can have the best chance for success. When it comes to the lettuce we're going to be starting, we're going to be starting the Grand Rapids leaf lettuce, the Tango leaf lettuce, the uh, the Red Sails lettuce, the Great Lakes 118 lettuce, and the Paris Island Koss lettuce. And then finally, uh, we're going to be uh, growing the giant crimson tomato. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna test the pH of our water, just so I can kind of see where we're at right now. And right now we are at right around a seven. Um, it's actually slightly, yeah, it's right around a seven. So pretty neutral, as you can see, pretty neutral. So a seven's, seven is good, um, but we need to get down to around, right around 5.5. So we're gonna add some lemon. We probably won't need the whole lemon because lemons are pretty acidic. So now that we've got that, what we're going to do is we're just going to dip our, our Rockwell cubes into, uh, into the solution here. We're gonna drop them in and let them soak that up. You don't want to let them just don't. You don't need to sit them in here for 20, 30 minutes. Just, just enough to, to hold on to that moisture, that water. And we're gonna move them over there. Don't squeeze them either. The, the biggest mistake I see people making is dipping it in and then wringing it out. Don't do that. Just let them in, let them soak up that moisture. The first thing we're gonna start are the giant crimson tomatoes. Now I am going to take two seeds and put them in each block. This will mean I will have to thin. I know I'm already hearing the shrieks from here, but it's really important to pick the healthiest seedling. And so I'm just dropping in two seeds per hole. And that way, that way I have the best chance of, of having not only 100% success, but also so that I can, um, so that I can select the healthiest of the ones that do, that, the ones that germinate. And now the last thing is I'm just going to take some saran wrap and cover them up. They do a whole lot better in uh, environments that are humid as well. And we're going to be good. Those are the giant crimson. And those are going to go. Those are going to go right there. And now let's start some lettuce seed. I'm going to start the Paris Island Coss lettuce, this romaine lettuce. And don't let it deceive you. We're not prioritizing lettuce this year. It's just we're going to have 16 plants. You can plant them a whole lot closer together than you can tomatoes. And I have a few extra cubes in here just in case something doesn't germinate in uh, in one of them. That way I have some backups because lettuce does grow so fast that if you realize, you know, by the time you realize that one of these blocks didn't germinate, you can't go back and, and try to you know correct the issue because then by then all of these will have already germinated and they're already off to the races and this one will always be stunted. So just it's better to have some backup plants and that's why we have so many cubes here. And just like the tomatoes, I'm going to be putting two seeds per hole and that way that way I have backups. And I can also thin the healthiest seedling. Okay. I'm just going to kind of close them off slightly, make it dark, just like we do with the tomatoes, and we're good to go. All right, I'm going to finish all these up here because you don't need to see that again. All right, we are done, got our seeds started, and I cannot wait to get sprouts. There's an old saying, a watch pot never boils, but I can tell you when it comes to seed starting, I don't follow that rule. <laughs> Let me know if you're the same way in the comments box below. I literally check these probably twice a day. It's something that I just, I don't know, I get so excited when it comes to sprouting seeds. So I'm really excited to see some sprouts already with the lettuce. We should start to see sprouts in about three days. So that's gonna be great with the, with the tomatoes. It should be between five and eight days or so. And you can bet I'm gonna be documenting this entire journey, you'll all be brought along for everything, so uh, it's gonna be exciting. Now the next question I know I'm gonna get before I go is, what about a heat mat? Are you gonna do a heat mat? No, I'm not gonna do a heat mat. The reason why I'm not doing a heat mat is because of the fact that number one, our plug is totally maxed out and I really don't want another thing going in our plug. Um, but then also, uh, when it comes to heat mats, they can cause a lot of evaporation and they are good for certain things. They're, cer they're good for doing like propagation of cuttings and things like that, but when it comes to seed starting, I find that the rock wool can really evaporate a little too well and uh, and it, they can dry out. And so the, the extra temperature really is not necessary, especially because these are right around 74 to 75 degrees in this heated basement. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it at all. And they're in an enclosed environment that's gonna lock in some of that heat. So heat mat, no. Is it, uh, is it, you, is it necessary? Definitely not. Um, can you use it? Absolutely, go for it, give it a shot. But 
as is. We're gonna be totally fine, and uh, I'm really excited. Now, we will be obviously bringing you along for more episodes in this series, so stay tuned for the next episode where we set up the bins. We're gonna be doing it very inexpensively, and I know you all are gonna love that because People want to start growing hydroponically. They want to start an indoor garden, but cost is always that uh, that limiting factor. So it's gonna be a lot of ex- uh, it's gonna be a lot of exciting things coming up very soon. Uh, so stay tuned. Make sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. And also make sure to like this video if you did enjoy it. So that's all I got for you today. As always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel, reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch y'all later. See ya.